Hello everyone and welcome back to Sandbox CDB and KSP 1.0.5. The launch for today is an unmodified Martin shuttle on ETS-9 carrying a docking adapter with crew accommodations to Hoffman Station. This launch was planned for KSP 1.0.4 and the EDB wants to see how it performs without any changes in 1.0.5. Only two Kerbals will launch with the shuttle on this test instead of the usual four. Commander Sean Barry Kerman, previously backup pilot on ETS-8, and Engineer Christina Kerman, engineer on ETS-4. So with that, here we go with the countdown. Team has 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and ignition, 1, and liftoff. We have liftoff of ETS-9 to Hoffman Station. A little bit of imbalance there, but it looks like Sean Berry has it. Sean Burry, I should say. And we're going to go for the roll program. We have a roll program. A little bit unbalanced there. Lots of gimbling going on. But again, it looks like the shuttle is well on its way. Now, Kerbin has experienced some aerodynamic and thermodynamic changes since the last time this shuttle launched and it is a uh, concern whether everything about this shuttle is still safe it also may not be the most efficient way well it was never the most efficient way to send payload up to orbit but it may be not even the most efficient shuttle that could be constructed by the EDB to bring payload to orbit and so that is a point of interest as well for now, it is still sporting uh, two boosters with mammoth engines, and of course, the shuttle itself has three skipper engines. Now, with the shuttle going transonic and supersonic here, the drogue chutes on the boosters have to be moved away from the normal booster separation stage because they're no longer safe at that point. Uh, now, in version 1.0.5, they have severe limitations, and that could cause problems, so they were moved up. And here we have boosted separation, but initial attempts at boosted separation did not work for unknown reasons, possibly because of the restaging in flight. But uh, we also had a booster strike against the wings on both sides. Uh, on the positive side, it was a balanced strike. On the downside, uh, the shuttle has lost a piece of its wing, and also a control surface. Mission Control decided that it was okay to continue at this point. It would be possible for the shuttle to do an RTLS, a return to launch site abort, but uh, that wing surface, in theory, should not be sufficient to hinder its ability to return. The loss of it, I mean. And, well, that does depend on the new aerodynamics and thermodynamics, though, and so we will have to see. There was always some risk with this mission, which is why the EDB only sent two Kerbals up. Shambury and Crescenta. So here we see the shuttle leveling out here. The skippers are overheating, though not that much. There was some control issue during this phase of flight, and so you see the burners working overtime trying to keep the shuttle balanced. Here, uh, the unlocking of the upper tank, which will hopefully help with balance now that uh, fuel is flowing from it and the coast phase as the shuttle aims for an apoapsis of 100 kilometers and tries to make use of as much of the external tank fuel as possible while it can. Now of course the skippers are not used when, after the shuttle reaches its apoapsis the external tank is dumped and then the shuttle is on internal fuel with its rapier orbital maneuvering system. Okay, there the rapiers are ignited, and the external tank is separated. So now the shuttle on its own internal fuel without the skippers. And there we have the rapiers bringing the shuttle to its full orbit, 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers, in order to catch. Actually, not 100 kilometers and 100 kilometers. Normally it would be. However, in this case, uh, the shuttle aimed to make a rendezvous with the station on its first orbit and that was possible because of the close proximity of the station so it overburned to a high apoapsis 
and there is the module that will be added to the station is a docking adapter the goal of this is to first of all allow the shuttle to dock with the station currently it doesn't have an acceptable docking berth but also the ED prime which had to do a very awkward docking on one of the existing docking ports will no longer have to do that it can use this berth as well so it won't have to have that awkward docking situation that we saw in the previous mission so here, the approach to Hoffman Station, the shuttle burning off some of its some of its relative velocity with the station. The station orbits at roughly 120 by 120 kilometers. Here the shuttle burns towards the station to close the separation to 0.3 kilometers, which is the standard standoff distance for payload deployment. And here it is coming into a parking position, and then it will deploy the docking adapter which will make its own way to the station using RCS and its own controller. You can see that there are two crew compartments on this docking adapter so capable of carrying uh, eight crew and that matches the shuttle's own complement of eight crew so there's accommodations for the shuttle crew specifically and uh, potentially for anybody riding on the ED Prime should the ED Prime use this docking berth. But there we go, controlling from the Clampatron docking port senior and then maneuvering towards the station. You can see docking lights for the side that the shuttle or the ED Prime would dock at. Now obviously lag at the station is pretty substantial. Frame rates are about at uh, 5 frames per second and so we would like to get the the Orion 1 space plane in particular away from the station as soon as it can be refueled. Perhaps it can transfer to test missions over to Duna or to EVE and the EDB is looking into that as the docking adapter lines up with its target port. Jeb Kerman wants to test whether the GB can return safely to Kerbin in this situation in the current atmosphere and thermodynamics of Kerbin and so that's a possibility as well. Uh, it might be the case that the Orion 1 will be brought down as we would like to see whether it could survive but there are serious doubts whether its current configuration can survive given the short wing and lack of control. As we see here the docking adapter turning to face to port now all lined up. The other vehicle on the station is the space tug and that will be uh, deployed for a uh, further payload and so it will separate with the station and so we will be recovering some performance like that. Here closing in on the docking port the station hopefully has its lights on at this point and now less than a meter closing in docking port magnetism and yes we have a connection and so you can see it is on the opposite side from the existing GB perpendicular to the docking area for the Orion 1 and there's a nice view of the existing assembly with the shuttle in the background. And now it's time to see if the shuttle can be recovered safely and of course more importantly Shambari and Crescenta can return to the KSC without any issue. The shuttle brings itself to its standby orbit of 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers making sure that it is well away from the station. Actually in this case it uh, ended up at a periapsis of lower than 100 kilometers initially because somebody forgot to bring up the nav ball in the map view but uh, RCS was used to boost that periapsis back up to the intended periapsis because we do want to see how the shuttle performs at a standard orbit what periapsis to use for its descent. So here the stricken shuttle though and all the concerns that uh, come with that does its retro burn at the standard position and brings its periapsis to 27 kilometers. And we will see whether that brings it into a proper approach, whether it overheats, whether it overshoots. 
Here the shell is in the atmosphere on the nighttime side. The KSC is in daylight. 65 kilometers and no apparent issues. 58 kilometers, still able to hold attitude, nose up more than 40 degrees actually, with sunrise up ahead. Burner thruster is definitely working. 53 kilometers, still uh, nose up more than 40 degrees. Air brakes have been out, out the whole time during the atmospheric interface. At 45 kilometers in altitude, the shuttle definitely had some trouble maintaining a 40 degree pitch. You can see pitch is maxed out. Uh, Sean Barry does not seem to be worried, but Mission Control was. By 36 kilometers, it was quite wobbly. It uh, occasionally went down to below 20 degrees pitch, and then with Sean Barry forcing the stick, it uh, peaked at about 35 degrees. Still holding about 20 degrees pitch at 34 kilometers as it approached the coast of the home continent. Very high and uh, going up at this point. The problem is the pitch was not sufficient. The higher the pitch, the more the drag. At this pitch, it's actually gaining lift. Over the western mountains, it was still above 33 kilometers and still wobbling in the pitch. Chambari turned it to the south a bit in order to prepare for a U-turn towards the runway. Chambari reported that uh, control was smooth and sufficient though not excellent. Of course at this point the shuttle rarely maneuvers very well. It's only at lower velocities as we see it approaching those velocities here getting below uh, 21 kilometers and 20 kilometers that really can turn substantially. Oddly enough, Shambari started to look a little bit concerned at this point, but Mission Control felt that the shuttle was well on its way. Incidentally, um, there was a restart of the program between launch and the return of the shuttle, so we do not expect any Kraken strikes this time. Crescenta was thrilled throughout and experienced no concerns whatsoever. Here the shuttle is lined up with the runway quite nicely and the only issue is maybe it's a little bit slow at this point. Under one kilometers it is still a fair distance away from the runway but it should be a fairly smooth touchdown as Shambari brought down the landing gear. Landing gear down and locked at 500 meters altitude. Feet dry at 180 meters. That's uh, 100 meters above the runway altitude. And Shambari decided to ignite the engines a bit as the shuttle was going to be quite close to its stall speed. So just giving it a little bit of juice to make sure that there was no stall prior to touchdown. 20 meters. 10 and touchdown wheels are down the rapiers are off brakes are out for some reason the drag chute on the shuttle had failed earlier it seems uh, that was probably because of a faulty action grouping of some kind or accidental activation of the action group that that drag chute was on in any case, with such a smooth landing, there was no need for it. The, the brakes themselves were able to handle stopping the shuttle without any problems. And it looks like despite the boosters striking the wings and taking those pieces off, that Shambari and Krasina did make it back to the KSC with uh, only minor inconvenience. And so there they are, smiling faces, ready to disembark. And the ETS shuttle once again proves itself, though though perhaps we will be seeing a different variant of it. The Martin shuttle will probably be retired. Certainly the boosters will have to be fixed to ensure that they do not strike the wings, but that will probably be accompanied by many other changes to the shuttle. And so perhaps this is the last flight of the pre-1.0.5 
ETS shuttle. And with that, we'll say thank you for watching coverage of this mission. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time.